All right. Well, good evening and welcome. Divine Creator, we ask that the light of highest awareness fill the minds and hearts of those who are open to your light. We ask that they be assisted and strengthened in their resolve to achieve peace using peaceful means. May their minds, their hearts, and their actions reflect the divine will to good for all. Comfort, strengthen, and support those who are in a difficult situation in their mind, body, or spirit. Bring confidence to them that your divine hand is at work in their life. Amen. My name is Reverend Mary Huber, pastor of the Community Chapel of Holistic Healing. We were founded in 1977 by Reverend Michelle Luzon, a mystic and channel for the multidimensional consciousness. And we are a nonprofit uh, organization here in the Washington, D.C. area, placed here by request of Swami Sivananda, who visited Michelle in, from Spirit uh, many years ago and asked us to be the light here for the nation's capital. And this evening, we have our annual um, New Year's prophecies. Um, Michelle was always a channel for this and always was a rich source of amazing input from all over the world, uh, which could be easily tracked. And she had such a great track record. But you know, the predictions are only um, the trends that they, uh, they see from higher spirit as to how humanity is uh, functioning, behaving, and uh, projecting themselves uh, at their next action. So if nothing changes, the predictions would be, um, would look like they're accurate. But if humanity finds that there is a prediction they don't like, our choice, our free will to change that is always within our grasp. So uh, what we were looking at doing is recreating as a group or as a consciousness a group uh, in CCWH, uh, sort of a channeled energy pattern that we could all tap into. And uh, while we all never get to the level of Michelle's abilities, uh, at least not in this lifetime, probably, not that we won't ever get there, but um, she... Um, uh, uh, is a, certainly the gold standard for us, but we have a certain ability of our own and we honor each other's channels here in this organization. And we know that we're all deeply connected to spirit because we got this wonderful start uh, from uh, Michelle's tutelage along the way, as well as the stimulus from our own I am presence. So um, we're here this evening to um, share and share what we, we believe that we have received. Um, I would like to begin always um, with Michelle's um, the recitation of the three healers or the faith, hope, and charity affirmation because that was always uh, something that she brought to us very early on. Uh, it was given to her by spirit and it is the balancing for all of our energy systems in our body, faith, hope, and charity. So we begin with the faith affirmation. I believe in the spiritual existence of myself as a perfect image of the divine creator. In this reflection, that is my physical embodiment. I have faith in the supreme guidance of my soul for my balance, my needs, and my opportunities. Outside of myself, there are also perfect images and nothing can delude my thinking otherwise. The hope affirmation acknowledging my faith in the omnipresence of my divinity. I hope for realization, awareness, and acknowledgement of the existence of the great I am within myself. And the charity affirmation. In understanding faith, 
In knowing hope, I pledge my actions, my desires, and my thoughts to the performances of myself on the physical planes of the earth, to honor, to love, and to enlighten all that is a reflection of the divine outside myself so that my perfection is image back to my creator. So help me God. So I wanted to begin with just a little general idea of what how we're going to proceed. And what I'm doing now is recording this initial, this first uh, part. Um, and when we come uh, after meditation, I'm going to stop the recording. And then we will get into a general discussion so that we can freely share and explore and talk about what we, uh, as a group, in, in a sort of a freer manner, so it won't be on a recording. So just let you know that we're gonna start with the people who have sent in their predictions. They'll be read. Um, if you're, if I, I thought Howard would be here so that he could make a comment about anything he said, but we're gonna not dwell on that right away. We'll just talk about what those first four are do the meditation and then open the discussion up. And hopefully the meditation will help you because our group energy being together will help you bring in something maybe you hadn't thought of before. So we'll proceed like that. So um, do you want to share um, the first of the offerings? And this was uh, from... Uh, Annette, and her, her name doesn't appear to me, but it's Annette. Warden has presented this because she wasn't able to be here this evening. Increased extremism worldwide and more protests and turbulence this year. She also felt she, she heard, she has more of a hearing uh, sense uh, for her channel. There will be more earthquake, uh, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and unusual weather and patterns continuing. And um, there is an urgent need for holding positive attitudes to bring in more light into the world. Um, that, I think, uh, is something that we probably all have somewhere along the line um, thought about ourselves. Um, as we can discuss those later after the the next reading is okay and i'm working on it <laughs> okay well Well, I just want you to say to know that uh, about an hour, an hour and a half ago, I was under the impression that I was in touch with Archangel Michael. I think he's been he's here tonight to help uh, in this whole process. Oh, Brenda, do you, you want to read yours? Sure. Um, I had gotten that uh, with increased pressure on Putin that the war would end in the Ukraine. Um, my feeling was by July, that must, might be just wishful thinking. We'll, we'll wait and see. Um, but I, I also got like a net that we would have more volcanic activity, uh, specifically in Hawaii. Um, and then more can start in other locations across the globe. Um, just that um, emotional uh, release of of that uh, energy that the earth absorbs from all of our emotions um, coming out through that volcanic activity. And, and an earthquake, um, uh, particularly in California, not the big one, thankfully, um, but, uh, but there would be some activity uh, 6.0 or higher. We we just experienced one um, recently, so possibly later in the year. Um, the and I added a fourth one. I hope you don't mind. Um, the parties in Congress, although I don't see it happening yet, um, that uh, eventually um, there would be uh, parties working together. 
to avoid any lame duck reputation that they they might be having right now. So um, again, maybe just wishful thinking, but fingers crossed. Okay, thank you. I think we have Howard yet. Did you want to do yours while we wait for Howard? Uh, I don't think Howard is coming. I think this is okay. unusual that he's late. All right, um, let me see if I can get Howard's up. Hang on. Well, here's a message. Hmm. Okay, he might have something going on at his house that unexpected. Okay, I have Howard's, let me pull it up. Can everyone see that? So he says one or more large and significant volcano, again, <laughs> it's a common theme here, volcanic eruptions will occur, posing more concerns about climate change. And again, he also brought in about Putin um, being uh, a, a resistance coming in about his previously supported uh, oligarchy. It's about money, costs, and disruption to them because of the war. Um, not to mention the loss of lives recently that they experienced. Um, the stock market will crash, a severe dip in the 2023. It will rebound, but this will cause great financial concerns around the world, which could have some repercussions. And he believes Joe Biden will become ill in 2023, which may cause him to stop work for a while. Um, it's interesting because he brought up about um, before we knew anything about um, um, the last regime, um, he had said that, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Last president, he he picked up that he would also become ill, and he did. He he came down with COVID, so it was interesting that he picked that up, and it did happen. Um, so um, it's a little interesting to see how that goes. So um, I'm sorry he's not here to share a little bit more, but um, those are interesting, strong predictions. Now, what I got was very general, and it was um, uh, the idea that we are in. In a cyclic activities, until we get everything cleaned up, it's going to, things are going to keep cycling until humanity clears it and gets rid of things. So I see all of those things again happening where the weather, the uh, volcanoes, those are earth change of things, whatever we've had in the past, they'll keep cycling around to help us humanity. Um, any of the other disruptions we have, there's a possibility that something else will come in. And it's always to help us get out of the pattern and move us firmly into the new pattern of the new world of uh, the future. So, um, but we, we still have to go through the dregs of it and get rid of them. So this is the predictions that are being picked up have to do with that. So um, pretty much that was, as I said, very general. And um, so now what I'd like to do is go into a, a sort of a very guided meditation. Uh, it may be is more guided imagery than it is meditation, but we've set into motion our group is here for a particular purpose. So we're entering that with that purpose. Um, when you get to the place where we, I will ask you to wait for a message, it doesn't have to be a general message. It can be something personal. It's whatever, whatever it is that spirit would like you to know. And it doesn't matter if it's not shareable, it's up to you. So I'm just like putting that out there so you don't have to worry about saying something. When you come back, uh, it will be uh, yours to share or not. And Howard is going to come in a minute. So I will. Um, Maybe tap dance for a minute until he comes in. <laughs> uh, it might be hard to bring him on board on, uh, in the middle of the meditation. Um, so, um, I, I just want to say now that Sunday uh, is is a uh, our uh, a tribute memorial remembrance of Michelle, and I'm hoping that uh, many people can come and just just share. It's, it's really a sharing time. 
for us to give our understanding because the family had, I guess, um, enough to deal with with their own personal ish, you know, messages that they wanted to get out as a personal thing. So we didn't kind of get into that mix. And I think it's important that we do uh, do that tribute as well. All right, Howard is here. All right, Howard. Um, All right, we're going to begin the meditation, or actually, as I said, the more of the guided imagery, um, based on my understanding that Archangel Michael is interested in being uh, overshadowing this this evening. <clears throat> so, um, as with all of your meditations, and you're all good and experienced meditators, you want to put yourself in a position where you're comfortable, you're seated in a pl place where you can do this exercise. And as you close your eyes and begin breathing deeply, you recognize, I want you to recognize now that your energy vortices that, below, that are the chakras below your feet are well grounded into the earth. And I want you to understand it and feel it, the presence of the earth energies below you so that there is no disconnect when we get to the point where we are traveling in a different direction. So we continue to breathe deeply and bring in light with each in-breath. So with the in-breath, you're bringing in the great light of spirit from very high dimensions, from the sun behind suns. That energy that comes in from the highest level comes to us as light. And we breathe in that prana, that light energy, and distribute it all over our body. And it goes through every cell into every molecule of our being. And with each deep breath, we bring in more light and more relaxation. Very deep relaxation because the energy that's here in the form of the light is assuring you that all is well. And we breathe in again. And we feel more at one and at peace. And our being is glowing. And from where you are, imagine that you see yourself along with other people who are here, all going toward a large room. There's a door to a large room that is available to you. We're all there as a group in front of the door. There is an angel present on either side. And as we approach, the angel swings the door open to this huge room with a lot of light and comfortable seating. I want you to enter and find that comfortable seat. And continue to breathe the light of that room in to your being. Become one with that energy there. And you relax. And because the room is guarded by angels, those are angels from St. Michael. The room is a room of St. Michael. You are in a protected area under the greatest protection that the universe can offer you. You are there within your own energy cone, but overshadowing and bridging everybody is a great bubble of light. The great being of angels were there to protect. 
And now you're being directed to count down. You're going within your own energy bodies, going to go into the deeper levels of yourself. And we'll begin to go down with a count of 20. And you might want to see yourself descending a lighted stairwell. And you go down 19, 18, 17, 16. Keep going. With each step is another number. 11. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, you're on a landing and you look and you find yourself in yet another room filled with angels, filled with guides who beckon you to your seat. You are accompanied by one or more of these guides, of these angels. And in this seat, surrounded by your angels, smiling at you, welcoming you, you take a deep breath and you listen. Listen to what you are being told or see what you are being shown. And we'll take a moment.
And now your angels are showing you it is time to begin the journey back. So ascending from 20 to 1, you begin a more rapid return. Counting down from 20 to 1. You reach one, you are back in your seat. In the physical, remembering what you were given, feeling relaxed, full of energy, and feeling quite well. 